Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we are doing the third Solid RF review video here. So far we've put one in my truck. We put one in my trailer and now we are going for the grand finale. We're going to put one in my house. Boosting signal everywhere. That is my goal and I'm very excited for this video. This is the Solid RF Speed Pro and this is made for homes or businesses, all sorts of stuff. It supposedly can cover up to 50,000 square feet and provide cell coverage, cell boosted cell coverage to that area. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box, take a look at what we have, and then we'll go ahead and start covering uh, some of the other parts and then actually figure out where we're gonna install this, do some preliminary checks and testing on this because you wanna make sure you place it at the right location and then we're gonna get this thing installed, test it out, and I'm assuming I'm gonna have very good coverage throughout my entire house. And so I'm pretty excited for that. So let's go ahead and get into this box. Once again, real quick compliment, the box that this comes in, it's a nice big fat box, like pretty tough. You know, it's, it's just a high quality package that it comes in. And I really appreciate that from a company. It's just same thing as the uh, kit that I put into the RV. And I'll link both of those other videos down below. Uh, but just the packaging is phenomenal. So I really like that. So let's go ahead and get into this box. So we got a little bit of foam padding at the top. And then we got a couple peanuts in here. And let's go ahead and see what the first thing we can get out is. And we're going to make a mess. So might as well just go for it. Oh, it looks like it's all actually in a couple nice shelves. So, here we have a little bracket for one of the antennas. This, and this is actually nice, it's labeled. This is our main inside antenna. And uh, also the actual booster is built into this, as far as I understand. So, that's nice. It's it's actually like a, a nice clean look to it too. It's like something you could just set on a on a bookshelf or a table or you know pretty much anywhere in your home, and it's not going to obviously stand out as some uh, you know antenna. People just think it's a very technological piece of art. So let's set that aside and let's take a look at this guy. This is our main outdoor antenna. So this is a panel antenna, which is directional. So this will go outside and will be pointing towards the nearest cell tower to give you the best coverage possible. This is a five band signal booster antenna for the Speed Pro. So very cool. And the last thing in this first container is our Speed Pro manual which gives you all the information that you're going to need to get this thing set up and it also talks about that preliminary testing that I was telling you about so we'll uh, talk about this a little more a little later then we have our second tray here get the peanuts off of here and this is just all your different mounting stuff so we have a kit with our L bracket to amplifier so here's our L bracket so there's that we have our AC power adapter which goes to the smaller indoor antenna we have coax extension cable we have our amplifier to main inside antenna so I may be wrong about the location of the amplifier, but I will clarify that uh, before we finish this video. And then we have our outside antenna pole. And finally we have our L bracket to amplifier mount and our amplifier to L bracket hardware. And that's it. So now that that's done and I have P 
peanuts all over my space here. Um, as you can see, there's really not that much. Just like all the other kits, this is fairly simple. Just have to run a few wires. You're gonna have to mount a antenna on the outside of your house somewhere and find a place for the other antenna on the inside when your power source and then run some wires. So really this should be a pretty straightforward job. So let me get everything unpacked here. I'm gonna go through and read through the manual here and then if there's anything that I feel like I need to point out, I'll let you guys know. And then we'll go ahead and get started on the testing and then the install. So I will see you guys right now. Okay, so we have everything in box and now I've had a little time to read through the manual. And I definitely recommend you guys do the same. So there's a lot of good information in here that'll help you in this install, uh, ensuring that everything is done properly. So definitely read through the install and what you're gonna find out is the first thing we wanna do. So we know where our cell tower is because we went online and found it, the closest one. And so we have an idea of which direction the antenna is gonna point. Then the next step now is gonna to be to find the DBM reading on your cell phone. Okay, and then this takes place in different ways depending on what kind of phone you have. If you have an Android or if you have an iPhone. If you have an iPhone, it sounds like you need an extra app, but Android, we can do it without that. So, you want to make sure you turn off your Wi-Fi, and then you're going to test in five different locations. You don't have to do all five if you don't want to, but the more places you test, the better idea you're going to have of the signal strength in your house. So, here I am. Got my phone out. I've got the Wi-Fi turned off. Just sitting here checking out my unboxing and stuff channel. And I'm going to go ahead and swipe down. And then I'm going to select the menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom. And I'll click on About Phone. And then I'm going to click on Network. And then here you can see my signal strength up top here. Hopefully this is coming through on the camera all right. I don't know how this thing focuses, but it is at neg 98 currently. So I'll monitor this for a minute. Right here, the signal strength. And it says it should take 30, 60 seconds to update, to refresh. So I'm gonna sit in a normal spot in the room, get the reading. I'm then gonna go ahead and write them down here. And then once I have a signal strength, from all the rooms, I'll come back and show you where we're at and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now we've got our measurements. We had the front office was at neg 94 dBm. The living room was neg 99. Garage was negative 100. Dining room was negative 106. And the master bedroom was negative 103. So, say hello, cat. Say hello to the world. She's helping me out, get ready for this install. So, those are our stats for inside the house. So as you can see, the best location for service inside currently is the office, uh, the worst being the dining room. So now that we have that idea, they, they say select location for the inside antenna, um, but that's tough to do without knowing the location of the outside antenna, which is actually the next step. So here, Step three is select location for the outside unit. So we're actually gonna go around on the outside of the house and we're gonna do the same thing we're doing on the inside. However, it is important to keep in mind, um, we know where the tower is going to be, but be realistic in the way your phone is pointing when you're taking these tests because if you're pointing right into your, towards your house, you know, your antenna is obviously not gonna be able to, your panel antenna won't be able to point that way. So we're gonna go ahead and point in the, the most realistic direction for each side of the house and we're just going to do uh, front, left, right, and back and we're just going to do those four locations because uh, my house is relatively square and so we're going to stick with that and uh, see how that does and then we're going to come back and look at our different levels and then determine which side of the house we should go ahead and put the antenna on um, you could also do this if you know for sure that, you know, three out of the four, if you walk around and say, okay, there's three out of four spots are bad. And you, let's say have a very intricate designed house with a bunch of 
parts in and out and high and low and all sorts of all over the place once you determine the best side of the house you could actually choose you know five spots on that side of the house that you know is the best and then choose the best out of those five spots if you wanted but for my house i'm just going to go around and do the four sides so i'm going to go ahead and do that get those readings and then we'll come back and then that'll determine which side of the house we're going to mount this antenna for the outdoor antenna and then based on that we'll also determine how much cable length we have and where we can mount or install the inside antenna which just needs to be near a power outlet okay so now i have all my measurements from all the different parts of my house and you can see the front and the right side of the house both get neg 94 dbm and the left side got neg 98 and the back side got neg 96 so i'm going to go ahead and stick with the front side of the house because i know that's probably the least obstructed way to get to the tower that's nearest to the house so now that we've completed that step four is going to be to temporarily mount the outside antenna so we can do some testing and so one important factor to remember is you want to make sure you maintain at least 20 feet of horizontal separation and 4 meters, so 13 feet of vertical separation. Uh, one thing to remember with RF is that every 10 feet of horizontal separation is approximately equivalent to 1 foot of vertical separation. So it'd be better to have more vertical top to bottom separation than width apart separation and have them at the same level so that's something to keep in mind um, so we're going to go ahead and put the antenna on its uh, mounting hardware and then we're going to clamp it to the portion on the roof that i think is probably going to best serve the purpose of this then we'll just feed the cable in through the window and put it into the indoor unit and plug it in and then we'll go do some other testing inside here. We'll run around and grab the levels. And then after that, if everything is good, then we'll go ahead and finalize and uh, mount everything exactly how we're going to have it mounted uh, on a permanent basis. So at this point, let's go ahead and Put the mounts on there and then we'll go ahead and do some testing okay so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take our L bracket to amplifier mount and the amplifier to L bracket hardware right here these little wing nuts and we're gonna go ahead and affix this to the bottom of this here and if you look in the instructions it shows you can do mount it two ways you can mount it going down like this if it's gonna go on the pole mount or you can mount it up like this if you're going underneath if you're going to be just mounting it directly to a wall for example if it's like a flat uh, surface happens to be pointing exactly the right direction however i know my mount will need to have be able to swivel a little bit so i'm going to mount it this way so i'm going to go ahead and do that with these guys and then we'll get on to the next step Okay, next thing I'm going to do is take my outside mounting pole and then two sets of the brackets and I'm going to go ahead and mount the pole to the antenna. So you're just going to lay these guys down here on the back and you're just going to drop the U bracket right over the top. And then you need to put a washer, lock washer, and a nut on each side. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then you're going to take your second U-bolt and you do the same thing. Take a harder, go through, washer, and lock washer, nut. And you don't want to over tighten one side versus the other. So you want it to be relatively even. Okay, 
And then I'm going to go ahead and flip this over here and I'm going to use a small little wrench to go ahead and tighten these nuts. So it's trouble. Okay, these are all nice and snug. You don't have to wrench them down insanely tight, but you want to make sure they're definitely nice and snug. It's not going to go anywhere. And keep in mind, either with the top piece or the bottom, one set of these clamps you may want to leave somewhat loose. That way when you mount this up on the roof, you'll be able to swivel the antenna to the appropriate direction. So that way you can make sure you get the maximum level of reception. So once we have the pole all set up, then we have our L bracket which mounts to the actual building itself. And so you mount the, this, this with some screws and then you got a couple different mounting options. Depending on how you need to point the outside external antenna, you can have a few options. So if you're going just straight up and down, if you're not, don't have to adjust for any elevation changes, you can just go top and bottom right there just like that. You can also use this hole and line it up with these different holes to change the angle of the pole. And then last but not least, you can also use this hole in conjunction with this slot so you can slide it up and get an exact elevation adjustment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we need to go outside and mount this and once we mount this, then we will go ahead and put the pole with the antenna and some of the hardware right onto here. And then we will do our testing. So you can see here, I just went ahead and temporarily mounted this bracket to a little one inch thick board. And I've got a couple of clamps right here that I'm going to use to temporarily mount it. Uh, just to make sure that this is actually where we're going to mount it when we do our final install. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ladder and everything and then we'll go outside and put this up. So you can see this is pretty secure up here now. This isn't going anywhere. And this would be good for testing purposes in case we have to move it. It won't be permanent. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take our brackets and get them put into place. Go ahead and get it tightened by hand. There you go. Now it's just tight enough where it'll just barely turn if you rotate it. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and grab our cable. We'll get that plugged into the bottom here and then we'll run it inside and do our test. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and take this protective cap off of the in female here. And then we're going to take our in male connector and we're just going to go ahead and screw that on. And you want to just make sure it's nice and snug, but finger tight's all it needs to be, but as snug as you can get it with your fingers, bare hands. All right, now let's go set up the inside portion and we'll do our testing. Also, just to show here, I just have the cable running from up at the antenna where it's mounted into a window on the front of the house. Okay, so here I am at the center of my house and I'm gonna go ahead and take my antenna for the inside here and I actually included the extension cable onto the antenna cable from outside. That way this is worst case scenario and it can only get better if I actually remove this extra length of cable. But I wanna verify that in the event that the cable is not long enough to get to where I'd like to put it, that I still will have more than enough cable. So we will retest that again at the end. If I can remove this, we'll know for sure that it should be better. So then I'm gonna take my power cord and I'm gonna plug it into the back here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this into the wall. And 
anxious to observe your lights coming on letting us know that everything's working so I'm gonna let this spool up for just a minute and then we're gonna go ahead and do our preliminary checks around the house and see what the levels are with the booster in full operation okay so we did our testing phase now with a temporary mount and in the office we had neg 90 dbm we had neg 75 dbm in the living room neg 93 in the garage neg 78 in the dining room and neg 84 in the master bedroom now compared to the original numbers it's a pretty significant gain these are all in the same exact order if you look here you can see that we gained 4 db here in the office we gained 24 db in the living room we gained 7 db in the garage we gained 28 db in the dining room and we gained 19 db in the master bedroom so those are all some pretty significant gains i'm i'm pretty happy with that so down here we have a decibel gain and how many how much power that is actually amplifying so 6 db gain is actually times in your power by four so these are some pretty significant gains they really should help throughout the entire house have very good coverage and good speeds so now we just need to finalize our outdoor installation and we're going to go ahead and permanently mount the antenna on the outside, right on the eaves there. And then we're going to go ahead and feed that ca cable through the attic and over to the indoor antenna where we'll plug it in. And we'll do a final test just to verify that everything remains just as good or potentially even improves if we were able to remove the additional cable. It will give us a little bit less loss. So this point I'm going to go ahead and remount that and I'll try and bring you guys along for the whole ride if I can uh, it's going to be dark in the attic so I don't know if I'll record much of that but uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing finished and check it out and then we'll talk about it okay go ahead take off the antenna go ahead and loosen these guys up make a note of the direction that we're mounted here pass down the antenna we're going to go ahead and remove the screws they do provide screws in the kit but I do like these deck style screws the pan heads they're made for outdoor applications I'm going to go ahead and mount this right here just to the side. Of the center. Okay, make sure it's nice and level. Snug it down. Alright, so we got this tucked in here nice. Now we're gonna now we're gonna go ahead and put the antenna in. nice and secure. We're going to go ahead and reconnect our cable. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and get this board off the top here. All right. And then I'm going to get the other end of the cable and then we're going to feed it right through here back onto the inside of the uh, attic, which will feed all the way back to the inside antenna. Alright, so the way I'm going to feed this in is I'm going to run the cable down through here 
and then I have a screen right inside and I poked a small hole using a pencil and then so that way it's only going to be just big enough for this cable to go through and not actually create any sort of extra gap for critters. So now I'm just going to feed this in there a little ways and then I'm going to go ahead and get into the attic and then I'm going to have my assistant feed this through from the outside as I trek it all the way through the attic to where I'm putting the actual inside antenna unit at. Okay, so here we're up in the attic. And now for the hard part. Gotta get all the way through to the front of the house and it is hot in here. So let's just get on to it. This is the easy part. We can actually walk through. Up ahead here is the hard part. Just be careful not to kink the wire as you're doing all this. spot I want to feed it down somewhere right in this area so I'm gonna have to go do some research downstairs and see exactly where that's at and then we'll see if we can't get this thing down okay so now we have our cable fed down from the attic and then we're up on top of the cabinets here in the kitchen so we're gonna go ahead and screw the antenna cable right into the back here just like we did before except this time we're not using the extension cable so the location that we chose for mounting is one that does not need that extension so it should be a slightly better performance and then I have this crevice right here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop the power cord down through there and that's close enough to an outlet to go ahead and reach which is nice so I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in and then I'm going to go ahead and set this right about here tucked back away And then I'm going to go ahead and take this cable, plug it in, and then we'll just come double check, make sure we have our green light. And we do. Alright, so that's it. So this thing's fully installed. Other things that are going to be worth doing in the future here will be uh, painting all the cables so that they match the walls that they're in. They'll be a lot more hidden. And then uh, I have other decorations that go up here that I pulled down specifically to 
just get this in place that'll go back up there and you won't even really notice that this guy is even there it's tucked away and you can clean up the cable mount as well just a little bit you could uh, I'll make it go straight down and then paint it and nobody's gonna notice even there so now we just have to do one more test and then we'll talk about what we find out and uh, how this thing's working okay so as you can see everything's all fed in through here cables nice and tight everything's nice and tight and the one last thing that I'd recommend doing is taking just a little bit of electrical tape and sealing up the connector just to keep any moisture from making its way inside here There you go. All right, and that's it. Hey everybody, here we are, the final part of the video. I know this was a long one, so thank you for anybody who's watched all the way through to this point. But let's go over our final results. So here in the office, we gained an extra two dBm just removing that extension cable uh, over the uh, initial pre-setup test. Then, in the living room, we actually lost 3 dBm, but that may just be margin of error. I wouldn't really take that to heart. And plus, neg 78 is still a really good number. So in the garage, we went from neg 93 all the way down to neg 82. That is a significant gain just from removing that cable. In the dining room, we stayed the same, neg 78 across the board. So that's not too surprising. It's very close to where the the uh, booster is at so that's not a huge surprise and then in the master bedroom we gained an extra 5 dBm we went from neg 84 all the way down to neg 79 so across the board these improvements are pretty much massive I mean this by far of all the boosters that I've tested is phenomenal I mean it is putting out great power I'm having great returns the panel antenna is very helpful. It gets, pulls in a lot of signal from a specific direction instead of just being pulling on noise from everywhere. So it actually cuts out a lot of the extra noise that's behind it or all around it other than the direction that's pointing and a small uh, area on either side of that as well. But this booster has been awesome so far. So we've had it set up for a few days now. We're really liking it. We're having full signal throughout our entire house and we're not having any issues with speed or anything else. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, that's all I can really say about it, is it, it works just as described. You know, you, you do your research, make sure you get it in the right location, and that you're pointing towards the tower, and you got it. As long as you have enough signal to begin with, you're gonna have a very, um, very much improved experience throughout your entire home or office, uh, you know, within reason. You know, there are factors that can affect that stuff, but that's not what this video is about. Just wanted to show you what it could do in my home and really and truly impressed. And I have to say the looks on that indoor antenna, I really did like it. Um, it actually blended right in once we put it up on the shelf there. So if it's something that you know your uh, wife or husband didn't want to see, then you know you could hide it away and it kind of just blends into the background. But if it's also something you think is kind of cool and want to show off and tell people about, you know, I don't think it would look that bad if you put it on like a, an end table or something like that, or even just a bookshelf, uh, you know, in one of your common areas. So I think it's cool. Plus, another thing that I just wanted to note is if you have poor signal inside but good signal outside, like you're in like a brick building or something like that, or something that has a lot of metal in the walls, rebar or something, um, this can take that outside signal and bring it inside too. You know, it's not just limited. Uh, if you can receive inside. If, if you can put that outside antenna somewhere get service, you can bring it in and that's pretty cool. I mean that could be huge for some people. So overall, absolutely recommend it. I was happy with this thing. Uh, I know not all my install video was perfect or uh, maybe it was even a little bit shaky in some spots. I just got this Osmo action camera and so I bought a kit with all sorts of parts in it and so I was using it in chest cam mode and then forehead cam mode um, and depending on what I was doing I could see a use for either but overall the forehead cam mode I think provided a lot better view of what it was I was doing so I did have to cut some of the footage out um, just because it was you know staring at a wall when I'm doing something up high or whatever you know so 
that's something I'll be working on continuously to improve. Um, but I really do like this camera. It, it's cool. It doesn't do great at focusing on super close things, but for anything else, just wandering around, it's very nice. You know, I'm not lugging around my big Canon camera. So that thing's pretty cool. And the audio is not bad either. I mean, there's a lot of audio on there from that, which I'm also impressed with. So I think that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, if you're looking for a cell booster and you're willing to spend a little money, this thing will get you there. Uh, I'm very, very happy with it so far. And uh, I think it'll last for a long time to come. Uh, the only negative thing I can think of, because I like to at least try and be as honest as possible, is one of the pieces of hardware had a little bit of rust on it. Um, but you know, that happens across the board from all manufacturers. Every once in a while you just get one little piece with a little bit of rust, but nothing that, a little wire brush, throw a little WD-40 or some sort of oil on it, and it's not gonna have an issue. So, extremely minor, and I guarantee it's not gonna be everybody's case. It was, you know, a one-off thing, but I want you guys to know my 100% honest opinion of what I think of this thing, and overall I think it's great. That's the only thing that I could think of that was a negative. Um, and it's really nothing. It's tiny. So uh, I definitely recommend this. I give it a you know 10 out of 10 as far as all the boosters. This is by far the best. No question asked. Like this is the best that I've tested, and I'm really impressed with it. So um, I will say you're also supposed to register these things. So make sure you guys follow up with that uh, before you start using them. Uh, it, you just want to make sure you're nice and legal so that you don't get yourself in any trouble. It, and instructions are in the back of the book. So just go ahead and take a look at that. But uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. I'll have a link down to this product below and to the other two videos that I've done on the Solid RF, uh, the car and the trailer slash RV version. And uh, you guys can check them out if you'd like. I also have links to my other accounts down below. You guys can go ahead and check those out. And please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out. It gives me a little bit of motivation to keep making videos. If there's things you guys are interested in, feel free to ask, or if you have any questions about this product, go ahead and ask in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, as fast as I can. And uh, yeah, so like the video, subscribe, share with your friends. If you know anybody who has poor service and would like to see some improvement, this is a video for them. So hope you guys have a good one. We'll catch you on the next one.